What is good, YouTube? This is your boy Aaron. Brian. And it's the Courtside View Podcast, and we are back today. With How you feeling? Episode. Yes, uh, another episode. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. You know, it's a nice, it's pretty warm outside, about 60, 60, high 60 degrees. So spring, I think spring started. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so it's getting, we, shoot, we ain't even have winter. So yeah, yeah. But let's get into these sports topics. Man, man, Cherry Blossoms is out. It's just a lovely scene. Yeah. Just a lovely scene. But anywho, hoodie season is almost over. This yeah. is a sad moment. No, the the insects and the bugs are coming. Hey man, back. summer right around. Y'all better start getting in the gym. Yeah. Oh, y'all got about two months. Anywho, let's get into the games. Well, not games, but let's get into the news. <sighs> Something happened yesterday. The Clippers. Mm. Paul George. He went down with an injury, and he was carted off. Mm-hmm. And so that's a big deal because, yeah. you know, the Clippers, they have championship aspirations. And I'm not going to lie. I was watching that game, and I wasn't sold on the Clippers. Watching that game confirmed everything that I thought about the Clippers. And number one is that they have no depth at all. Like, it's non-existent. I have to say this, that the GM for the Clippers, he messed up very badly because they didn't play Bones Highland at all. They're relying on Marcus Morris, who's not good anymore. He's mid at best. Gordon, Eric Gordon, mid at best. Russ Westbrook, we don't even need to go down there. We already know what he is. Then you have Terrence Mann, who's solid. He's, you know, he's a youngster. You could play defense, hit a shot occasionally, but he's not a go-to guy. And you have Kawhi, you have Paul George, you have Zubox, who's solid. But, you know, he's he's a role player. He's a starter, but he's a role player at the end of the day. And Robert Covington, who's god-awful on offense. Like, I was watching that game, and I understand why uh, Tyron Lue, um minutes, why why his minutes are down. Why he, mm-hmm. why he, yeah, why his minutes aren't the same as they once were because he is dead awful when it comes to offense i was like yo what does he do well seriously he's just on the court vibing (laughs) so yeah they're screwed and the fact that kedrick perkins really went on air a a week ago and said that i think he said that the clippers are a dangerous team and that he believes the clippers can come out of the west have you been watching the clippers like seriously i don't I don't know. I'm not gonna say I know as many, much basketball as him, but sometimes I listen to I listen to some of these basketball analysts, and I wonder, do they really know what they're talking about? Are they really watching the games? No. Nope. Analyzing the games, and so the Clippers are just awful. And now with the Paul George news, it just confirms that their title hopes are pretty much dead. Now we don't know the severity of the injury, but it's not looking too good. How you feel about just the news? The Clippers, they they legit might be cursed. Because <laughs> as soon as stuff started to look decent, this happened. Yeah. And, like, that injury, it looked, it looked like the same injury Giannis had in that year they won a ring. We mm-hmm. hyperextended his knee. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, but it, that was just unfortunate. And Giannis, he's not injury prone. And so... He, his body, he can probably come back from it a lot sooner. Oh, yeah. But with Paul George, he's been dealing with. I don't think he had injuries. knee injury before, though. Well I, I, well, I can't remember, but you know, he's just been dealing with all sorts of injuries. They've had to load manage him in different departments, different times. So it's just unfortunate. Um, the Clippers, I was never sold on them. Uh, I know at the beginning of the season, I said the Clippers were going to go to the finals. I don't but know why you said that? Because I was looking at, I was just looking at. The other teams, and I was like, I don't believe in these other teams, but now that the season is almost over, we have like two weeks left, it's just inevitable that they're not they're not going to make it to the championship at all. It's not, are they going to win a first-round series? That's that's really a question mark. I don't want to be good enough to not end up in a play-in. Mm, that's a great question, but they do. They are like thirty-eight and thirty-four. I think it is. 38, so thirty-five. They they yeah. Well, they have a little bit of a lead. They have some leeway because if you look at the Western Conference standings from like six to twelve, it's like 
it's just crazy. Like teams are like five hundred or two games out of five hundred. It, yeah. It's it's yeah, it's all over the place. So they have a little bit of wiggle room, but without Paul George and now you have to rely on Russell Westbrook more, man. This is a recipe for disaster. And I have to say this. Tyron Lou, the last play of the game was egregious because you had Marcus Morris on the floor. You had Russell Westbrook on the floor. Now, I'm going to give Lou Dort credit because he was clamping Kawhi Leonard. Like, he was all over. He wouldn't let him go anywhere. But at the same time, Kawhi Leonard couldn't really go anywhere because Marcus Morris... He was atrocious. I think he was like one for six from three. He was he was bad. I think he had seven points. Russell Westbrook, it doesn't matter what he does. He's his defender is gonna lay off on him. And they were literally like doubling Kawhi. So like Kawhi would go, he would try to go to the right, but then because of Russell Westbrook's lack of shooting, his defender was able to close the gap. I think it was Jalen Williams. I think that's his name is. He's he's in the rookie of the year conversation. He was able to close the gap to make sure that Kawhi wasn't able to get by Lou Dort or get to a spot because he loves the mid-range area. And that's just some of the problems that exist. Now, f- let's be let's be honest. Those refs were egregious. Those technical fouls. Yeah. Man. Terrence Mann. Yeah, that was the silliest ejection I've ever seen. <sighs> so I think he pointed at him. He did something. And he cursed at the ref as well. Uh And so the ref decided, oh, you're out of here. Like, really? Come on, man. This is an emotional game. And the fact that they decided, you know what? You're out of this game. Off of just pointing at the ref and cursing at him. Come on. Probably ain't even curse at him. More like like saying just cursing in general. Mm Mm-hmm. Probably wasn't even that. He he probably didn't say "f you ref." You know, he probably was like, "Man, what the?" You know what I'm saying? And then the ref apologized to Kawhi for giving you know giving him a tea and stuff. I'm like, really? This is what we're doing. These refs need to get suspended or fined whenever they do stupid stuff mm-hmm. like that. The ref for remember Fred Van Vliet? He called out mm-hmm. one of the refs. So. That ref, he's uh, he was the leading ref, I think he was, and he, for the last like I think four games, he sort of downgraded, like he wasn't leading ref anymore, and so mm. very interesting. You don't really see that much. You only really hear that much, but yeah, man, that game. I don't know. There's something going on. There's something fishy going on. I'm gonna put my tin foil hat on real quick. There's some. I don't know. Is the is the Western Conference teams are they conspiring to make sure the Lakers don't make the oh, playoffs? Oh, brother! Are they conspiring? Says the team. Oh my goodness! You know y'all have like a two hundred free throw differential in like twelve games. <laughs> I said the teams. I'm yeah, not saying okay. the refs. I'm saying the teams. I don't know what's going on. If the teams is it conspired, y'all see it's the teams versus the refs. Uh-huh. All those teams in ahead of y'all. Versus the refs. You see, bro, you, did you see what the Kings did? I think it was two nights ago against the Utah Jazz. It was like without Lowry Marketing and Jordan Clarkson, they still lost. Come on, man. You cannot make this up. Nah, there's something fishy going man, on. You, 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 stop worrying. There's something fishy. And then they lose the next night at home. Well, it's Boston, but still you're at home and stuff. And I'm just like, come on. I don't know what's going on with the West. Lakers, handle your freaking business. That's all I gotta say because we're gonna we're gonna get to them. We're gonna get to them. But before we before we get to uh everything that happened with the Lakers, what is what do you think is gonna happen? Because we have two weeks left in the NBA season. Give me your predictions for the playoff spots. Who who what teams will make the playoffs in the West? Okay. Um Oh, well, obviously you got the Nuggets, uh, Kings, Grizzlies. Um, I'm sure the Warriors will make it just because mm. they're the Warriors. Mm. They somehow always sneak their way in. Um, Lakers. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
Clippers will probably make it. And I need one team. Um, the Suns. Oh yeah, duh. The Suns. <laughs> I'm, I'm, about tripping. To say, I'm surprised you didn't say the Suns. I forgot. I forgot all about the Suns. I haven't really heard much from them since after KD went out. I haven't even been seeing them on TV recently. Mm-hmm. Well, you're gonna see them tonight because they're playing the Lakers on ESPN. So I might win that though. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. I think AD decides to show up tonight. I'm gonna say this. Here's my predictions. Obviously, number one's gonna be Denver. I just think they're gonna. They've have too much of a lead. I think they're gonna win, even though they've been struggling. I think they're like one and six. They're past uh, seven games, but they're gonna win. They're gonna be the number one seed. They have too much of a lead. Number two, it's gonna be interesting because the Grizzlies and the Kings are like neck and neck. With Ja coming back, I say the Grizzlies are gonna be the number two seed. I think they're gonna overtake the Kings. Number three is going to be the Kings. Number four. Hmm. Suns? Probably Suns. I'll, I'll probably give Suns the edge. They have a little bit of a lead. They have some wiggle room. They have veteran leadership with Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, and uh, Chris Paul. So I'll give the Suns the edge. Number five. Man, this is tough. I'll probably go, I'll probably go Clippers for the simple fact that they have a little bit of a lead too. They have four game I think a three or four game lead as well compared to the sixth and seventh and eighth seed. Um sixth seed. Uh man. You s you don't you didn't have the Mavericks in the playoffs, did you? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh man. Man, six seed. Man, this is tough. They could, but uh This is tough. Uh I'll probably go with I'll probably go with the Mavericks with the six seed. Luka coming back, Kyrie, even though they don't play defense, they do play spoilers sometimes, so I'm going to give them the edge. Um, I think they're playing the Warriors tonight as well. I think I think the I think the Mavericks will win this game if Luka plays, obviously, which I think he might because he's questionable. I think he is playing. So I, th- I have the Mavericks in that game. I think the Warriors are still on a road trip, but, yeah, I have the Mavericks in that Yikes. game. So seven seed, I'm going to go with the Warriors. <laughs> Seven, you know, Grizzlies versus Warriors rematch. I'm gonna go with the Warriors, and then the A seed. Mm, it's between the Utah. I'm. A, it's between Utah Pelicans, Lakers, and Thunder. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna go with the Thunder. Oh, brother! I'm gonna go with the Thunder. And and here's here's the thing because I like the Thunder. I like their makeup. They just beat the Clippers, and they they've been playing spoiler on a lot of these teams they're they're high powered offensively i like shay out shay gilgis alexander uh Jalen williams he's in the he's um runner up he's he's in the conversation for rookie of the year uh i love josh giddy's game like josh giddy is phenomenal every time i watch the every time i watch okc it's shay and it's gonna be josh giddy and them damn assists because he can dish them out and next year they're gonna be a problem with chet holmgrim and the amount of picks that they have at their disposal <sighs> That man, uh, what's it? What's the name? Um, the GM for uh Oklahoma City, Sam Presti. Sam Presti. That man, he's done it again. He's revitalized this team. I don't know how he did it. It's, it's unbelievable. But yeah, he he fleeced the Clippers, fleeced them for Paul George. So yeah, that's that's those are my top. You don't eight. believe in the Lakers? Hell no. Even if, when LeBron come back, he bro, he's gonna come back probably with five games left. That's that could be all you matter need. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I don't know. I don't even know if we'll come back until like the play in and stuff. So I'm not confident in the squad. I just don't believe in Anthony Davis. Cause he's the man that make that's gonna make everything run. He's the wild card in all of this. And I just don't believe in his makeup. I don't think he has that dog in him. I don't think he has that killer in him. We saw it in those past two games. Uh, egregious. Absolutely egregious. And the other players as well. I just think Darvin Ham at times he can he can um give too much leeway to some of these players, like a Dennis Schroeder, like a Malik Beasley, uh Troy Brown, and it can be detrimental to the team. And I've seen that from these past couple of games where he would leave guys out for too long and they wouldn't produce anything. So the fact that Anthony Davis is not living up to what he should be and Darvin Ham's just mishaps as a head coach, I'm just not a believer. Oh, 
Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Not OKC. What am I talking? Minnesota. I, I have, was thinking about. I have Minnesota over. I was thinking about the Timberwolves, but uh, actually, you know what? Let, let me let me I mean, let me change are, it up. Are they in the seventh? Wait seed? a minute. No, no, no. Six seed Minnesota. Seven seed. Ah, oh, damn. I'm gonna go Golden State. Eight seed Mavericks. Mm. That that's my list. I think Minnesota is better than Golden State. And they're better than Mavericks. And they're getting Carl Anthony Towns back. Oh, they are? Yeah, they're getting him back. And they're going to get Ant back eventually. It's not The injury's not too serious. Even though he's in a walking boot, they, you know, they're trying to make sure that... Oh, yeah, what, what's up with Kyrie injury? Um, So, I, what I saw, I remember I saw the play. It was, uh, he got tripped up, I think it was, with Dylan Brooks. And I think he played the remainder of the game, too. But he said not a, he left in a walking boot. Yeah, there's not a lot of... Uh, not a lot of stuff been reporting. Yeah, the walking boot whole thing. Maybe they're trying to, you know, be cautious. But I, I don't think it's too serious. Okay. Uh, but he might he might sit out a game or two. But at the end of the day, I think that the Mavericks with Kyrie and Luka, I think they're going to squeeze in. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if OKC, they somehow get in there. But I don't believe in the Lakers at all. True. I mean, come on. You should have more faith in your team. I don't. I don't. Cause I watch them like all the time, dude. And this is probably they'll be okay. You the know, machine will ensure that they're in the playoffs. Let's you know what? Let's transition to Lakers. Have you not seen the Austin Reeves free throw numbers? I have. No way, y'all don't make the playoffs. Let's, let's transition to the Lakers since we're t- since we're on the topic. Cause I'm not a believer in this team at all. And it's frankly, it's because of the of the number one guy, and that is Anthony Davis. He. Always after the game, whenever they lose, oh, it's my fault. I'm gonna take the blame. But then the next game, he doesn't act. He doesn't act like the game. Like he doesn't impose his will. He doesn't make you know try to make amends for what he did in the last game. It's just, oh, you know, I'm just gonna vibe. You know, I don't, I don't want to disrupt the flow. Like, dude, you're the number one guy, and you're just sitting there, just chilling. Like, oh. You're just going to let D'Lo and Dennis Schroeder constantly ask for a freaking screen. You need to go up to them and say, give me the damn ball in the post. And he's too scared to go to the post. He never wants to go to the block at all. I don't want to hear, well, you know, um, he's going to get doubled. Well, okay, even if he gets doubled, guess what? Somebody's going to be open. So I don't want to hear that excuse. Anthony Davis in 2020. Versus the Anthony Davis in 2023 is a completely different person altogether. I'm telling you. Maybe it's because of due to the injury that he wants to – he's monitoring his his um, leg injury because he doesn't want to put too much stress on it. That's why he doesn't go to the block as much. But I don't want to hear that because Joel Embiid has dealt with injuries, and he still was out there going 100%. On offense, I don't know about defense, but on offense, um, he plays and B plays uh, pretty solid defense. Yeah, but in the past, you know, there's been moments where he's not been the greatest defender on pick and roll and stuff like that. But I digress. Anthony Davis, it's just night and day. I was looking at highlights of Joel Embiid versus the Cavs. Versus, you know, Anthony Davis when he was playing the Mavericks, right? It's unreal just comparisons between Joel Embiid and his mentality versus Anthony Davis and his mentality. And one of the things that frustrates me about Anthony Davis is whenever he gets doubled, he's a deer in headlights. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And the spacing is always off because he always gets the ball at a terrible spot on the floor where it's easy to double him and the shooters aren't able to get open as much. Guys aren't able to get at a good spot to, um, you know, orchestrate the offense. But when you look at Joel Embiid, even if he gets doubled, he's still aggressive. He's still going to attack. I was watching this one play where he was in the post and Cleveland doubled him. But he still found a way to score. Like, he literally... I think he may have spin moved out of the double team I think I see. and did I a think layup. I, yeah. And then there was another move where he did a fadeaway on some Kobe shit. You know, he had he had a counter mm-hmm. to the double. But when you look at AD, 
He doesn't do that. Like, he used to do that back in 2020. Back in 2020, they were, every game they were doubling him on the post. But because he was at a certain spot on the floor where it was easy to sort of, um, number one, see the floor in general. And if you're double, you can kick it out to somebody or you can um, counter it a certain way. Now, they just give him the ball. It's like, damn, it's like. At the top of the key, close to the three-point line, at the worst spots in the floor, and I'm just I'm just sitting there like, what do you expect, Anthony Davis? What do you expect, AD? Of course, you're not gonna do well if you keep settling for these type of plays. And I'm just I'm just not a believer. You know what Anthony Davis is? He's in that Paul George tier, mm. super tall, ta- superstar talent, but he's a number two production Mm. number two mentality that's what he is top 20 player but he's the number two one of the best number twos in the league arguably the best number two in the league but he doesn't have the number one mentality and that's his problem you can't build around him i I agree i agree Mm. well at least for that last part you can't build around him no yeah no and he don't got dog. He don't got dog in him no more. You're right. You're absolutely right. And I don't truthfully think he. They believe. I don't think he believes they can win. I don't know, man. It's weird to me. You're a champion. You've I don't seen, think he's bought in this year. I don't. I don't think he's been bought in since 2020. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know, but it's just unfortunate. Like this is. In my opinion, it's probably the most frustrating Lakers season I've ever watched. Even all the bad years with D'Lo and Jordan Clarkson. Even Julius more Randall. frustrating than last year? This was more frustrating. At least this y'all was, tried to remedy the problem last year. Y'all was just stuck with Russ but, and but I knew, But I knew that we were bad. So okay. I, I was like, all right, I don't, I don't need to watch this. this. This year is so – and then we had the excuse of, oh, LeBron was injured, Anthony Davis was injured. Maybe if all of them were together, let's see what they look like. This year, it's just, it's the most frustrating for me because I have to internalize and realize myself that the guy that I thought could be the number one option, I'm talking about Anthony Davis, Mm -hmm. I've come to realize that he can't be a number one option. And it's so frustrating because just looking at his days with the Pelicans and his first year with the Lakers, he was phenomenal. Like He was arguably a top five player. He was one of the best defensive players, and he was top two for defensive player of the year at the time. And just seeing where he is now to where he was back then, it's just so frustrating to me. And just seeing how Rob Palenka was able to get all these pieces to 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 fit perfectly with the team, and for you to not elevate your game, giving us 15 points against the Magic, against the Magic. 23 point what was it 23 points against the Mavericks and oh my gosh let's get let's get into that game so oh yeah. boneheaded mistakes you're the best player on the floor and you make three egregious mistakes in like 30 seconds you are up four points why are you fouling a three point shooter He's acting like, was it Cleaver? Something like that. I think that's his name is. Max Cleaver. He's acting like that dude is shooting 40% from three. He I. He's okay. He's I. I'm I'll let him shoot it. Or just contest it, but don't foul him. Like, what are you doing? And then the next play around. So they give him the ball, right? They foul him. Misses the first free throw. I'm like, you cannot make this up. This guy, this guy is, there's something psychologically, something psychologically wrong with him because he's done this so many times at the end of games where he misses free throws in the clutch. Remember the Philadelphia yeah. game? I think it was against um, another team, maybe Indiana. Or, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it was. It was, um, Yeah, I know it was Philly for sure. Um, the Kings. Yes, that too. I remember. It's so many games where he falls flat. And then the final play. 
This man acting like, oh, you know, I was um looking for the rebound. It's the final I'm play of the game. I'm about to say, game. like, what rebound? Like, he was like, why are you crashing he, when Kyrie was getting double teamed? See, he, he caught me because he did a pump fake and I thought he was going to shoot the shot. So the defenders didn't even jump on that. How were he was double teamed? Uh, he had Reeves and I who forgot who else. Kyrie Irving is Jesus. I think he. I think um was it Reeves and maybe D'Lo was on him. He was double teamed. We could live with that because there's overtime. But no, you want to make another boneheaded mistake and you leave an open shooter. Same play that oh, happened against Indiana, too. It's oh. hilarious. Like, literally the same exact spot, same circumstance, same scenario, same pass, same everything. You know, And it's so funny because now everybody wants to criticize Anthony Davis. Now everybody's out on Anthony Davis. But when I was out on him two, three weeks ago, I was hearing, you're crazy. When I said Anthony Davis, he's not going to be able to carry this team. People saying, oh, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know ball. Now everybody's jumping to my bandwagon because they see what I see. Mm. I knew about this. Mm. I'm not about to be fooled. I know your game. You can't fool me. Mm. So, yeah, man, I'm I'm so disappointed. This is so frustrating. And you guys better. Hey, Anthony Davis, your legacy is on the line tonight. You better win tonight. You better because this game right here. You know we're still not mathematically eliminated, but it's gonna be it's gonna be hard for us to come back from this. I need a Suns master class tonight. You're disgusting. Don't you want the Lakers to make? Didn't you say the Lakers gonna make the playoffs? So how the hell how the hell you gonna say? Oh, I need a I need a Suns master class, but then say oh the Lakers. The downfall make the is more important than me being correct. You you have some shame. Have some shame. But anywho. Your legacy is on the line tonight. You want to do you? You love La La. You love Los Angeles, right? You love being here. You love being with your favorite pair, LeBron James, right? Act like it. Act like you want to want to remain here because don't act like we not on the phone ready to trade your ass because there's still there's still some value for you. We will get you out of here. After the season is over. So your legacy is on the line. That ring, that bubble ring, you didn't win it in front of the L.A. crowd, so it don't mean as much. People don't love you like that, A.D. Even get it together. They should. Y'all, wouldn't get, sniffed, y'all wouldn't have sniffed that ring without get A.D. Get it together or you're done. You hear me? I need 35 and 10. No DeAndre Ayton, no Kevin Durant, a Suns team with no depth, an old Chris Paul, Devin Booker is nice, but that's about it. Get it done, or else your legacy is over for the Lakers. You're completely, you're, we're out on you. People are already out. I'm out on you, but if you don't show up, it'll just confirm everything that I've already known. Prove me wrong. Damn it. I want to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I man. I didn't know Aiden was out. What happened? He injured? Um, I don't know. It might be a hip injury uh-huh. or something. I forget. But he's out this game. And there's no excuses. They have to win. He has to show up. Don't rely on Austin Reeves to carry you. We had Austin Reeves dropping 35. That's the fakest stuff Caring I've ever seen. Carrying the squad. He was the best player on the floor. And this man has no shame. Carry the team tonight. Do your thing. Or it's over for you. Your legacy is on the line, Anthony Davis. Play like it. The NBA's legacy is on the line tonight. If I see any funny business tonight with them free throws, the league will have have to answer some hard questions. <sighs> I love it. I love how you guys are just, just hating on Austin Reeves. Because he keeps getting free throws. Maybe he's just really good at drawing fouls. Because I'm looking at him. I mean, shoot. All he's doing is just playing the games. And yeah, right. I literally seen a play. He drove, stopped, jumped backwards into the defender, and got the and one. I was like, come on, son. Hey, Didn't they literally change the rule to they're, they're going to call that an offensive foul? 
Hey man, he said he studied he studied uh, James Harden and Trey Young, you know, the masters mm. at drawing fouls, so you can't They don't even get as many fouls as he does. Hey man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't There's know something what's going on. sinister at play so, here. Something sinister. I just think he's a really good basketball player. Undrafted. Didn't want to sign with the Detroit Pistons. He's like, I want to go this to the is Lakers. Brock Purdy all over again. All right, all right. You can say you can say what you want, but he can hoop. Yeah. Uh but yeah. Anthony Davis get together. Okay, so something else happened. Mario Chalmers, he went on a podcast and somebody asked him a question about LeBron James. And he said that teams didn't fear LeBron. Hmm? Yeah. They said teams didn't fear LeBron. When he played with LeBron, he said nobody feared LeBron. Now, he said when they got on the court... Yeah, they feared him, but in terms of before the game, they didn't fear LeBron. How do you feel about that? He well, said, maybe they didn't f- – uh, maybe he worded this wrong. He probably should have said they didn't fear his team. No, nah, they, f- nah, they said they didn't fear LeBron. Mm, I don't believe it. Well, I mean, that's what, that's what he said. And he compared it to Jordan. He was like, when – when guys were uh, about to play Jordan, they were fearful of what he was going to do. When it comes to LeBron, they weren't fearful of him. Now, during the game, yeah, but before the game, nobody was fearful of him. And I think that <laughs> that's hilarious because over the years, I've heard that so many times from other players like Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett and other guys where it's like, oh, nobody was f- fearful of LeBron. But – when you watch the tape, when you watch what transpired, it's clear as day that these guys are folding like chairs out there on the court. And I don't know about you, but it looked like people were fearful of LeBron. Now he said on the court, maybe, maybe he's sh- maybe he's right about that. Maybe, maybe before the game, the night before, people weren't saying like, "Oh my God, LeBron is gonna drop forty on me." Oh my God, I have to. I had to get up for LeBron because he's going to embarrass me. While with Kobe or like a Michael Jordan, you know that these guys are going to try and embarrass you. These guys are going to try to humiliate you. While LeBron, he's a past first guy he's trying to set people up. He's going to get his, but it's not going to hurt as much. So his sort of, the way that he described it, I can kind of get it. But guys were afraid of LeBron. Toronto was afraid of LeBron. Um... OKC was afraid of LeBron. Many teams were afraid of LeBron. Um, but it was a weird time when Mario Chalmers was with LeBron because remember 2011. You remember that series? Yes. Yes. So The series that never gets mentioned up for some reason. Mm-hmm. So the perception on LeBron was that, oh, he's a choker. He... You know, he he has all this talent, but he can't win the big one. He's not a closer and stuff. So I can understand what he's saying because around that time, people were just criticizing him left and right, throwing their shots, their hail makers. So I can understand what he's saying about that, but I don't know, man. That 2012 game six against Boston, you can't tell me those guys weren't fearful of what LeBron was doing. Come on now. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that because that's, that's just an interesting topic, especially for a former player, a starter. Man, yeah. w- is he really a reliable source? Why? Why you say that? Because, you know, they didn't – you know, they him and him and LeBron in Miami, they always bumped heads. Well, he said he was his little brother. I was his little brother. So it was like a little brother, big brother type of uh-huh. relationship. So, but he said – I mean, they still had love with – he still were cool with another good, uh-huh. good friends at the time. I mean, it seemed like it. Uh-huh. Okay, I guess. But, uh, I mean, I'm not really too mad about it. I just think the, there was people, players were fearful of LeBron. Like, I think so, too. Maybe maybe in Miami, maybe that was the case because of the whole 2011 fiasco. Yeah, maybe. And then San Antonio there, you know, you got Tim Duncan. And yeah, I don't think Greg San Antonio Popovich. feared anybody. Yeah, so they have that championship pedigree. And so I, I could see and what maybe about. the Celtics probably didn't either, considering they they you know they've been running through that mm-hmm. comp. So mm-hmm. he might have a point, 
But Indiana for for one. Well, then Indiana they they took him to seven and stuff. Yeah. So you know he might have a point. He might have a point. But when he went to Cleveland, yeah, back, yeah. Once that second after that second stint, that's when. Yeah, the Cleveland run. There's no way. Yeah. The teams had Especially to be 2018. Bro, bought against uh, Isaiah Thomas led Boston Celtics team. They were they were scared. They were absolutely scared. Indiana team. They were scared. Toronto. They were scared. Like yeah. the Hawks. The Hawks. They were, excuse me, they were scared. They had the number one seed, home court advantage. LeBron said, not today. They were the scared. The Bulls weren't scared of them. Oh, yeah, the Bills, they had that dog in them. Yeah. Derrick Rose. If Derrick Rose didn't get hurt, they would have won that series. I don't care. What? Oh, you talking about uh, 2015? Yeah. Oh, he did? Did he? He got hurt that series? I, I, I forgot. Yep. It was either wow. him or Jimmy got hurt. I'm pretty sure it was Derrick Rose that got hurt. Wow, I didn't, I forgot about that. But yeah, that that's was... the I think that, that's the series in Game Three where he hit that game winner, mm-hmm. and I think he got hurt after that or something happened. Somebody, I think it was either him or Jimmy got hurt, but I'm pretty sure it was Derrick Rose. Wow. And they was I was and I think they was up two one because yeah, I think they, they won Game Two mm-hmm. in or Game One or Game. I know they won game three, but they either won game one or game two. I can't remember. Yeah, they were up 2-1. I yeah. remember. And then remember, the, I think the, the game afterwards, LeBron hit that shot. Mm-hmm. That game-winning shot. Turned the whole series around, 1-6. and six. Wow, I miss those days. But yeah. Yeah, that was – I was I, okay, so like after I say 2015, that's when sort of the fear factor started to kick in. But, I mean, you know, his, his point is valid, but I, I still think teams were – Fearful of him. <laughs> my life in these sentences. Fucking right, it's either that or life sentences. I'm relatives with Benjamin. I used to give a fuck about my luck when I was innocent. Now, what the fuck is up? I'm at your neck like a penalty, nigga. I need.